Originally, Kenny had about 30 verses, not 30, but a lot. And I think he wanted more verses, but I think that's part of the song's charm was it cut it down to a couple of verses. So Greg said that there are many more verses to this song than just really the ones. Yes, and I was going to ask you if you were aware of that. I did I not know say, that. Do you know those verses? I may have heard him do one of those verses live, and it kind of threw me off um, thinking back. Um, because I was like, where is this coming? I thought he made it up on the spot, but that's uh, interesting to know. There weren't many verses to that song. Bless his heart. He's, uh, he's, it's not like the Bernie Toppin lost files. It's not like they found, uh, you know, three more recordings that didn't make the White Album. I think there was maybe four verses on there. And he pared it down to two, I believe. And it fit nicely into like a three-minute slot on the record. I might be wrong, but... Sometime Sunday morning I stumble from my bed Afraid of what the mirror might say to me But it was fun. I mean, we just kind of, we actually just, we wrote it in probably, I don't know, half hour? Maybe? It doesn't, you know, it's been a long time, but it doesn't seem, it wasn't, let's say, I think an effort that was, you know, where we worked days on or weeks on. It was a pretty quick turn. With memories of you so strong A classic case of love gone wrong But maybe someday Well, I'll keep it right And it was basically a guy was telling us a story, telling me a story about how his girlfriend had left him, his fiance actually had left him, and he was so sad and, and distraught and just lamenting about all the things that coulda, shoulda, woulda been and all that. And I said, uh, well, uh, what happened? Uh, she's with some guy somewhere out there. I said, she's still in Kentucky? He said, yeah. And I went, voila. Sometimes Sunday morning I stumble from my bed Afraid of what the mirror might say to me With the memories of you so strong A classy case of love gone wrong But maybe someday well, I'll get it right Yeah, just, just kind of <laughs> kind of like the basis of Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. You know, that, that epiphany. I said, yeah, somewhere in Kentucky, and that's how it happened. And so after that, once he started playing Henry Clay's, he uh, brought me a couple records. Um, I got to know some of his songs and would play them with him on stage. He brought me a couple of his old vinyl records. Um, and so Somewhere in Kentucky was the first one that stuck out on that and listened to it hundreds of times on my record player. And what drew you to that song? I'm a huge uh, ballad fan, and especially like a power ballad. Um, and I like, I've always loved the melancholy songs. I don't know what the draw, I'm a happy person. People always think I'm real sad, but um, I love melancholy kind of music. And so when that song came on, um, you know, I just think it's a beautifully arranged song and the lyrics are, it just paints a perfect picture. Um, and so for a country song um, or just a storyteller song, it's, I think it's just an awesome, awesome piece of music. Sometimes Sunday morning, I stumbled from my bed Afraid of what the mirror might say to me. So why do you think people connected with the song and loved it so much? I think the biggest reason is it's done well around here and then still is kind of endearing to people is it's got Kentucky in it. You know, hey, go cats. You know, it's got Kentucky in the title. And it's in the verses and courses and everything else. And then too, I think it's very easy to relate to. It's that kind of love gone wrong, lost love, wonder where she is now, wish I had her back. It's a pretty simple tale. It's your classic country story. Uh, and I think that's probably why it's pretty simple, easy to understand the words, easy to understand the meaning. And uh, it fits three minutes, you know? Easy to dance to, as they used to say way back in the day. You can waltz with your girlfriend to this song. And I think that's probably why it's made it so long. To be honest, you know, that's kind of nice. People still come up and say, hey, that song you and Greg wrote, you know, I still hear it. But the truth is, uh, we wanted to make money on the song. We weren't trying to become like local legends with this song. Uh, back in the 80s when we wrote it, the hope was 
that some big country star, because we thought he's a pretty good song, would record it and put it on their album. Maybe if we got lucky, it would be released as a single and crack the top 40, but at least get on a big album where we'd get some royalties. You know, we wanted to make money. <laughs> this was a financial endeavor, and like everyone that's probably ever written a song, uh, we had hopes that, uh, you know, there'd be some cash coming in. As it was, uh, I think we made maybe a couple hundred bucks on BMI checks because we got local play in Lexington and some up in the Eastern Kentucky area where I'm from. But, you know, so, I mean, it's kind of nice people remember it, but, you know, down deep, I hope Chris Stapleton's watching this or Dwight Yoakam, you know, and they, they decided to throw it on their album. That, was, that would bring somewhere in Kentucky together, wouldn't it, 30 years after the fact. You're still holding out just a little bit. Yeah, we're still holding out. Thankfully, I had a day job. You know, I never quit the day job because I knew I was not going to become the next great lyricist. Maybe someday, well, I'll get it right. Somewhere in Kentucky, there's a man who's feeling lucky. Sleeping with a woman that once was mine. Somewhere two lovers lie Together side by side In a place that once was mine Boy, it's early. That's awful early, Miss Collins. <laughs>